so on that point, you settle in San Francisco ultimately, and you're there, and mm-hmm. you have this degree in film. So talk to me about how Midnight Mass started, which is like, it's just a literally, I mean, is it what I'm picturing? Like Rocky Horror Picture Show at midnight and people show up dressed mm-hmm. a certain way and it's a participatory event. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm I picturing. Mean, it, it was, you know, San Francisco in the uh, mid nineties, I moved there in 96 and there was this brand new club that had just started that I became a member of um, called Tranny Shack. Um, and this is back when the T word was not uh, a pejorative and, you know, it was, it the, the cast, you know, was inclusive of trans women and drag queens and actually cis women, you know, it was very San Francisco, bearded queens, anything goes. Animatronic from the Scissor Sisters was, you know, my sister performer back then. You know, we both, she Love and I both, that. yeah, we both got our start at the same time on the same stage. And that cabaret, that show, um, really launched the performing careers of a lot of us, a lot of people. And I think part of it was just being, you know, part of the same community and inspiring each other. And so after two years of performing there with those performers, I created Midnight Mass, which was really an offshoot and part of the same community. And it was to showcase my love of cinema and also my love of Rocky Horror and to do something that hadn't been done how should I say this? I was inspired by hearing about the Coquettes. This is before the Coquettes documentary. And so the the little I knew was that they did a a, a crazy drag show at midnight at the Palace Movie Theater before movie screenings. So I heard that and kind of made up my own version of that. Now, years later, meeting Coquettes and seeing the movie, the Coquettes, and studying about the Coquettes, I'm like, oh yeah, this we were two totally (laughs) different things, but born of the same spirit in a way. And then that kind of took off, right? Like you didn't necessarily expect it to, or you did, but I mean, it became a big thing. I didn't expect it to the way that it did. And in fact, I I was kind of oblivious to it for a while. You know, it was was obvious that Landmark Theaters who uh, gave me the green light and allowed me to do it. And and, and in their defense, they really, you know, you know, kind of had to defend it in some ways because there were people even in San Francisco who were very bothered by it and offended by it. You know, in the first year we would have little old ladies show up at the theater thinking they were coming to mass, you know, like at midnight. Wow. You know, and they'd show up and there's all these, you know, horror drag queens standing outside. Um, But over the years it became kind of an institution in San Francisco and it would sell out shows and you know, I, I, I look back on it now and I'm like, we broke every law in the book. I mean, we did things that you should never have been allowed to do, you know, like drag queen roller derby in the theater. You know, we had ambulances show up and take people out. You know, we, we would make the audience sign, you know, release of liability forms on their way in. And it, at the, I was so young and naive, I didn't realize how stupid a lot of it was. <laughs> so right. despite that, you know, it became successful and... Uh, And yeah, and then, you know, I was making short films and, you know, doing, basically it was kind of integrating all of my interests. 